Throughout RuneScape's history, there has been a number of incidents where either Jagex made a mistake so bad, or the players did something so catastrophic that the game required a rollback. See, rollbacks are considered the absolute last option in correcting a mistake because in a persistent world MMO, they're so detrimental to the player's progress. I mean, check this out. Every time they happen, Reddit posts flood in from people who finally got that pet or that rare item drop, and now they've had it reset. Or on the flip side, you got that one guy who's super excited because his hardcore Iron Man died and now it's been reinstated. What I'm trying to say here is that rollbacks break the persistence. And so Jagex uses them only in situations so extreme that no other option is left. We're talking about those extinction level events, when max cash starts spawning for everybody and there's infinite item dupes. But on top of that, there is another type of rollback that doesn't require Jagex to make a mistake. Instead, these are caused by the players, and as you'll come to see, they were eventually abused to commit what is now one of the most infamous dupes in RuneScape's history. So buckle up and hit that like button because today we're taking a deep dive into RuneScape's history of rollbacks. I think some of these are really gonna blow your hair back. At least, that's if you don't lose it. But luckily, the sponsor of this video is Keeps. Listen fellas, we play RuneScape, we're getting up there in age, it's okay, but did you know two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? You'll go from this to this. But with keeps, it doesn't have to. The best way to prevent it is by doing something about it while you still have hair left. Treatments typically take four to six months to start working, but the problem is you could lose your hair in four to six months. That's why it's important to start using keeps sooner rather than later. Now, there's only two hair loss medications approved by the FDA. You may have tried one before, but definitely not at the price Keeps is offering it. They're essentially offering a brand name product at a generic version price. You get all the benefits of great customer service, delivery straight to your door at a no frills discount. They're able to do this because their customer base is massive. Thousands of men trust Keeps to keep their luscious locks luscious. So if you're ready to prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash crumb or click the link in the description. You'll receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash crumb. A big thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this video. So since the release of Old School, there has been three major rollbacks caused by Jagex. And it all started almost three years ago with these bad boys right here. Dirty, rotten autoclickers. Does this look familiar? Shame on you. Shame on me. But these cats almost caused an economic disaster. Take a little peek at this. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, he had max cash on him. You can tell by the way these streamers are freaking out that they're not meant to be getting max cash from these player kills. So what the heck does this have to do with people auto-clicking at Artie Nights? Well, this has gone down in history as the coin pouch glitch. See, on July 12th, 2018, Jagex changed the mechanics of pitpocketing. Instead of conveniently wallowing in the clammy disposable income of everything from these knights to cave goblins, instead, now, you'd get a coin pouch, and after collecting 28 pouches, you'd have to open them to continue on. This was an anti-botting measure, done to prevent people from auto-clicking, specifically Artie Knights, for hours at a time. But the trouble came because the developer behind this update made a mistake. A huge mistake that then wasn't caught by the quality assurance team, and as you can see, made it to the live game. This was an economic disaster. It takes people hundreds of hours to collect max cash under normal circumstances, and now it was basically effortless. And so Jagex had to act fast. This glitch was only in the game for approximately 20 minutes before they shut the servers offline. And they remained offline for many hours. During this time, players were flocking to Twitter looking for an update, and Mod Ash was single-handedly doing the entire PR department's job by firing out tweets about the status of the situation. Because of this, this, it was known very soon after that the bug had to do with a logic error that occurred when converting the pouches to coins on death. What made this devastating is the logic worked perfectly fine with coin pouches. It was other items sharing the same code that experienced the bug. See, the actual function was meant to prevent coins from exceeding the maximum value of 2.147 billion. But for these other items that convert to coins on death, 
and there's a long list of them. It accidentally converted them to that max value instead of preventing them from exceeding it. This explains how the bug slipped into the game. The QA testers had only checked to see that the pouches were working fine. With this public knowledge, Reddit was now speculating on the damage done to the economy and the possibility of a rollback. Remember, up to this point, a rollback had never happened before. Eventually, Jagex broke the silence, saying that they're not even sure a rollback is possible. But given the situation, they see it as the best option, and so they were going to attempt to reset the game to just minutes before the scuffed update went live. It worked, but not without issue. As Jagex stated, since they've never done anything like this before, some issues may still persist. And persist they did because this exposed a slew of problems that occur when undergoing rollbacks. We're talking about everything from people buying bonds with the glitch GP, to duped and missing items. But the second rollback in RuneScape's history further exposed these problems, and how they might be exploited. Perhaps it's because a few conniving players were better prepared having gone through it already once. Nevertheless, it occurred less than one year after the first. On the 28th of February 2019, a normal weekly update had just gone out and players found that a Twisted Bow spawn was added close to the farming guild. Of course, word quickly spread that this item, at the time worth 1.2 billion GP, could be picked up freely every 30 seconds. Players flocked in mass, and within the same hour that the update went live, Jagex also caught wind of the problem and they did a hotfix to make it so the Twisted Bow spawn was no longer obtainable. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck just happened? <laughs> but another problem was happening at the same time. Thousands were already obtained, and those players were actively real world trading them, buying bonds in mass for years worth of membership, and scooping up tons of gear and supplies with their newfound wealth. Oh, and we can't forget a bunch of people chucked it at the duel arena. The money was essentially being tumbled, making it very difficult to track. This created a massive problem for Jagex if they wanted to track down and delete the illegal bows. So at 1.35pm they shut the game servers offline to stop people from doing this, and then contemplated their options of how they could fix the situation, ultimately deciding on a rollback. Now, during this downtime, we learned from Mod Ash on Twitter, again, that this was a mistake made by one of the artists. It turns out they have the power to place down item spawns, and the artist had accidentally made a misclick in the map editor and put down this Twisted Bow spawn very far away from the actual content he was working on. So, when QA went to test that content that he had developed, well, the Twisted Bow was nowhere in their sight, and so it went unnoticed. Um, be a bit of a meme and just... there you go, guys. Twisted bows, as far as the eye can see. Now, there was some speculation on Reddit that the artist didn't make an honest mistake, but rather made an awful attempt at a get-rich-quick scheme, because of course these bows sell for about a thousand dollars in real-life currency on the black market. Twisted bow glitch was an inside job, I fooled all of you on this day. Speculation aside, there was something else brewing in the background. Some real trouble. It has to do with people exploiting this rollback. There were some ways that people immediately exploited it, but also this rollback was really the catalyst to old school's most infamous dupe. So we already talked about some of this immediate exploitation, that is real world trade, people buying bonds, but there was also people using swapping services to get the gold on RuneScape 3 to protect it. I talked to a prolific gold trader about this, and he told me that within the hour, gold prices went from 73 cents per mil to sub 20 cents. Of course, in the end, it's the gold sellers and swapping clans that get screwed, and the glitch abusers are the ones that make out like bandits. Maybe that's a type of poetic justice, but the one commonality here is the exploitation is only happening while the glitch is still active in the game. What Jagex didn't expect was for another problem to come to light after they did a successful rollback and turned the game back online. The trouble started with a fella called Ecomouse on Twitter. He complained to Ash that he traded money between his Zerker and his main account, but after the rollback, it was on neither. Mod Ash responded back saying, I'm afraid if two accounts had slightly different rollback points, items can indeed appear on both or neither. Both or neither. That means there's a possibility for items to be duped. 
He went on to explain in another tweet that this is because players' save points are distributed across many servers in many different countries, so the database archive point is not the exact same. So then another player asked specifically if this could result in item duplication, which Modash confirmed to be true. But he said as rollbacks aren't something players can predict, it should be unfeasible to get into a position to abuse it intentionally. Oh, how wrong he could be. Remember I said at the start of the video, there's another type of rollback that doesn't require Jagex to make a mistake. Remember these tweets for when we talk about that after the last rollback caused by Jagex. Now, this one is fairly recent. On the 4th of June 2020, Jagex introduced a new city. Darkmire, along with the sins of Father Quest, but it didn't go as expected. Within minutes, this post cropped up on Reddit. His expensive Twisted Ancestral, a new color kit that had just been added a week before, turned into the new quest items upon logging in after the update. Jamflex acted real quick on this one. Within 10 minutes, they had turned the servers offline and they announced that a rollback was underway. Modash gave us the reason, again, for why this happened. He said that the item IDs have been over written to become the new quest items due to a merge error when pushing the code. Nevertheless, third time is the charm, right? This rollback should go smoothly. And it did, till people started getting this message on login. For some reason, the rollback managed to corrupt certain players' save profiles, and while the servers were back online working perfectly fine within 4 hours, a small group of players was locked out of the game for days to come as Jagex manually went through and fixed their save profiles. So at least for now, this marks the end of rollbacks caused by Jagex. As for rollbacks caused by the players, these actually date back to the beginning of old school. It can happen whenever a large group of players gather on a world in a single place. Most notably, this happened a number of times when Ice Poseidon was hosting large drop parties. It turns out when a server crashes, it doesn't know what to do with the players online. So instead, it rolls them back by whatever comes first, either to 15 minutes before the crash took place or to their last save point. And a save point is made every time you log out of the game. Now, remembering the Twisted Bow dupe happened in February 2019, exposing the potential for rollback dupes in the first place, it wasn't until July that anyone actually thought to exploit this. But it didn't start with server crash. Crashes. It actually started with game updates. A player who goes under the name Drew, who I have seen dubbed as one of the best bug abusers, found that performing an anti-logout stall during the last seconds of a game update would cause a rollback to happen to the character left logged in. Like a world crash, this is because the game couldn't do its normal checks and saves when it kicks everybody offline. With this, he was able to successfully dupe items, that's what you're seeing on screen right now. But from all the public information available, it looks like he didn't abuse it and actually reported it to Jagex who fixed the issue for the next game update. This meant that the game update stall method no longer worked. But it didn't end here. A month later in October, Rendy had the same idea as Drew when theorizing in his Lower the Better series episode number 12, about how timing a game update might be used to complete a quest without gaining the experience reward. However, by this time Jagex had already implemented the fix, and so his attempt failed. But a few bad apples from the bug abuse community iterated on the idea after catching wind of it from Rendy's video. However, they didn't care about Quest. They knew the potential it held for duping gold. They recalled and examined the instances of world crashes caused by Ice Poseidon, and that's when they found out about this mechanic. It was a way around the fix. A world crash meant that the game couldn't do the type of save checks happening during game updates, meaning that a rollback would happen. With it theorized, now they thought if only they could replicate the amount of players in a single area, like during Ice Poseidon's drop parties, then they'd be able to cause rollbacks at their own discretion. To achieve this, they went on to make thousands of accounts and used a special bot client to fill a world and spam a bunch of animations in a small area, just like those drop parties. And to their joy, their little test succeeded in crashing a world, and it was then that they knew it was possible to perform the dupe. So in November 2019, armed with the knowledge and tools, rollback events were now predictable and repeatable. 
so it was feasible for players to dupe items at will. And that's exactly what they did. They'd trade max cash between as many accounts as possible within the 15 minute time window, logging out and back in between trades to create a safe state of having the GP on each account and then idling logged in while they crashed the world. This resulted in each account having max cash, making it the most effective dupe in old school's history. On the first night, they allegedly duped a total of 6 billion GP, and the next night, when the JMods left work for the day, they were planning on duping 100 bill. Luckily, Rendy, who did a wonderful 17 minute video covering this entire event in depth, exposed this before it could ruin the game's economy. Because of his quick efforts, Jagex ended up patching the crash bug so it was no longer possible and banning the bad apples before they could do lasting damage. That said, some other folks from the bug abuse community did a short video where they allege the culprits got away with a total of 80 billion GP. Now, what's crazy about this, while Jagex fixed it on old school, they didn't fix it on RS3. Between May and June of 2020, the same thing ended up happening on there, but this time with much more success. They took it slow, and over the course of 5 days, they got away with well over $100,000 in real life profit from selling the items and gold they managed to dupe before Jagex caught on and fixed the bug. It's now no longer possible on both games. So that wraps up the history of rollbacks in RuneScape, at least for now. As you can see, their consequences ended up expanding much further than just lost pets. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button and consider subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one.